when they do get together, and if they did fight, honestly, the worst could happen is they kill each other. Hey guys. Betty. 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 There's Cora. Getting our normal greetings here. Jackie, Betty, Mom, and the chickens. <laughs> Look at the crew here. Look at the crew. And there's Charlie. Hey, Charlie. Charlie and the chickens. To all these chickens, Brooks. It's your little banny. One of your first time bannies right there. Watch these chickens follow us. Say, hey, little mama. Look at all these hooligans. Bunch of them. They said, feed me, feed me. Chicks. Chick, 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 chicks, chicks. <laughs> Those are wild. Whoa! Did you see that? Sucker flew. There we go. Look at them, look at them, look at them. Brooks's chicks getting so big. Like, Full grown chickens now. And there's Betty. And some new ones. So their mama is this one right here, one of our bannies. One of the first bannies that we ever had. And there's Betty. Betty is eating the my ice cream shoe. melt. My my shoe. I don't think she's eating your shoe. She's eating the hand there. She's uh, oh my gosh, she's <laughs> eating the drippings off your shirt. Hey guys, Dusty Baker, Customers Bison. Welcome back to our channel. Thank you guys for watching us. Hey guys, I just want to thank Jackery for sponsoring today's video. We are Bison Ranching, is what it is. The big guy here, Big Joe. Oh yeah, he's doing great out here with his family. And uh, got six baby bison out here, six red dogs. Let's go see what this guy's up to. What's up, Big Joe? Hey, big fella right here right around the corner it may be here already but breeding season is going to keep this guy busy because this is the most females he's ever had he's got 16 breedable females in here uh with the big joe herd and it may uh he's got his work cut out for him now so it's always uh good to see if the big guy can cover all that because he is solo out here there's other bulls out here, like some calves, but they're younger and not going to do anything. Got to be two years old to be able to breed. And uh, he is the only one over two. So Marissa and I have had our hands full, full the past month, bringing all the animals over, going through the challenges of Dunbar staying away from Big Joe. And this is a perfect example right here of why we had a hard time and it being so challenging of getting Dunbar to the Haas group and uh, getting him to the, our back 80. And uh, it was a challenge. This is pasture one. They're in pasture two. This is just a simple cross fence, right? Just five strands of barbed wire that we use for our cross fencing that you can see here. The problem is, is when you, when you get these bulls and they, you know, they want to show their dominance and their big toughness and they're really showing who owns this land and who's the big dog around here. Well, when they get to doing that, like Big Joe's not very, he's pretty good when it comes to uh, showing his dominance. He, he rolls around and buffs and he may, you know, rub on some trees and roll in the dirt showing his territory. Um, but Dunbar, he's pretty characteristic when it comes to that. 
he would be hitting on this fence and he would be tearing up this fence more than likely. I, I know Dunbar, he's been with us for, since he was yay tall. But uh, so that's why it's very challenging to move these bison around. And when you've got animals like, you know, Big Joe who's eight, and then you got an animal like Dunbar that's six, two mature bulls, they can get after it. And so this fence is not gonna stop them, right? This is just a cross fence, like I said. But if two bulls get into it, what's gonna happen is they're gonna tear this fence up and Big Joe and Dunbar are gonna end up in the same pasture. And then getting them apart would be a huge challenge. I know a lot of people are probably wondering, why didn't you just take Dunbar straight to the hoss herd? Why didn't you just take him out there and release him in the pasture? If I could go back and do it all over, I would have probably done that. But one of the things that we wanted to do and that we always try to do is we bring animals to the home place, to the corral, at the barn, and we let them acclimate for two or three days before we actually move the bison. That's something that we do. And from now on, this is just a lesson learned. We may have to not do that sometimes and just do a straight release. And in this case, if I could go back, we'd have just taken Dunbar straight to the back 80 burn unit and let him go with the hoss herd. But this is all part of ranching. We've only been doing this for five years. You gotta live and learn and grow from there. When they do get together, and if they did fight, it could honestly, the worst could happen is they kill each other. One would kill the other. I mean, it's that dangerous of a condition. And uh, you know, it's sort of in the, in the wild, that's survival of the fittest, right? The toughest bull wins, he gets to breed the females. Well, in some cases, some of those bulls don't make it. They don't live. Sometimes they get gored and it hits a internal organ and they can die out. And then we don't have a Dunbar. We don't have a Big Joe. Uh, that's why we really avoid those situations. And this fence isn't going to stop them. Um, if the bison want through there, they get through there. But one of my number one things that I always tell people when you want to raise bison they always ask about fencing. It's just a cross fence. And I know I've said that several times, right? Because your exterior is way different. So we do six strands of barbed wire um, and much tighter and a taller T-post for our exterior. The best thing to avoid a bison from getting out or busting through your fence is you got to keep them happy. That's the number one thing. Now, there's a lot of other things that you got to do, but keeping those bison happy. Give them fresh water. Give them cubes every now and then. And make sure they have plenty of grass to eat or hey whatever your type of program is wherever you are every every branch every program is different so those are things that we try to do is keep them happy uh, now the only challenge is we're going to run into some of this is when you get two bulls together or one on the other side of the fence from the other during breeding season all well, that could change <clears throat> i'm going to kind of move with the herd here we're gonna go do a herd check, Marissa and Brooks and I, we're gonna drive the truck back there and check on them. And what I wanna do is explain kind of some of the reason why Dunbar is back there with them. And uh, really why we let Big Joe have the adult females here and why Dunbar got the younger herd. You guys probably don't know where we're at. You guys don't see this part of the Ponderosa and we don't slow down and appreciate it enough. This is one of our favorite spots. We brought Brooks here um, like right after we got the Ponderosa and we found this awesome spot down here. We get to enjoy a beautiful creek. So blessed to have a creek. But one of the fun things that we like to do is come up here as a family. Because we got the RV, we can take it anywhere on the ranch, pretty much. As long as we don't have to cross this thing. But I want to show you guys what's happening right back here. We are having a little family fun get together over here. Now let's go up here and take a look. Okay, guys, we are out here in the actual burn unit area. We've got the RV where we got Brooks in here with us. We've got Marissa, Maya, we got the little family, the Dunbar herd. They're out here in the pasture grazing. We kind of got a little safe spot here. We got a tree surrounding us. We got my truck over here on the side. Kind of got our own little peninsula here our area hanging out but something uh what we've got going here is 
we're putting out 418 watts. Most of it's probably coming from this bad boy right here. We're cooking fries right here. We've got boiled eggs straight from the Ponderosa that Brooks got this morning. Yep, uh, probably from Betty, a couple from Betty and some of them other ones. But I can't wait to tell you more about this guy. It can run this whole thing right here, all right there with the extra battery pack. Charging my MacBook right now. You know I gotta have that and make these awesome videos for you guys. Look at these pretty flowers picked straight from Marissa herself. Look at her in her muck boots. Looking good, babe. And these are Rebecca, actually, is what it's called. Growing straight from the pasture right here. Marissa couldn't even get these to grow last year in her garden, but <laughs> they're growing out here in this beautiful burn unit. You guys can go back and watch that. Last October, we burnt this entire pasture. Now, this is 80 acres, but we were only able to burn 70 of it, um, and the Dunbar herd is actually out here. They're out here. They were up here yesterday morning with us, but I haven't seen them out here next to us today. We kind of have this area sort of blocked off. This is one of Brooks's favorite spots to go swim in a little flat spot where there's some rock and stuff. Really pretty. What do we have here? Boiled eggs. We're gonna make some deviled eggs out of these right here. Oh, they look so good. It's gonna be so good. And we're not using much power at all. We can run all this for 37 more hours just right here off of <laughs> this power station. We're gonna make some deviled eggs, apparently. Huh? The baby chicks. The baby chicks, that's right. Uh, do you want some eggs? Did you, how many did you get? Three. You got three? I think you got five or six, actually, but we're still working on counting. So, anyways, no big deal. We've got it all going right here by Jackery. Yes. Mm -hmm. What's your gun in there? Well. So we're not just cooking fries and uh, some boiled eggs to make deviled eggs too, but uh, the main entree, don't let me forget to tell you, one of our favorite cuts of our bison is uh, burgers. And obviously we get ground, we get lots of ground out of our bison, but one of the things that we do special is we get the pre-made patties and somebody else likes them too. But so we've got some pre-made bison patties as well to cook out here and so we're gonna have a nice little meal provided from Jackery Maya. and Maya and mama are hanging out Dunbar herd may or may not come up here and see us maybe they will you think they'll come see us Keep trying to get you a fire going it's very difficult it rained yesterday what? it rained yesterday oh. we've really enjoyed the Jackery 2000 plus portable power station this sleek design power station is so versatile it can be used for several things outdoor camping the rv life off-grid homesteading diy work technology you name it backup power blackouts the explorer 2000 plus provides plenty of backup energy wherever you go on the go before you head out for your next adventure there's also three simple ways of charging it. You have the solar charge, which is available. Your simple wall outlets that you can use in your home. This power station can be fully charged in about two hours using the fast wall charge. And the car charger as well. What really stands out about this portable power station is the suitcase-like pull rod and the double wheel design. So you can easily roll and make your power station as mobile as it can be. When you're sitting outside in nature, especially around the RV or whatever you're doing, you don't want to hear a big generator running. This power station is so quiet. Not only is it quiet when it's being used and running, it's as quiet as can be when it's charging as well. This sustainable solar power by this power station, you have a max output up to six kilowatts with a max capacity up to 24 kilowatts, which is enough for a home backup or an RV backup. This is the first Jackery expandable battery pack. A single Jackery Explorer 2000 Plus solar generator supports up to 
five add-on battery packs at a time, expanding the power from 2 kilowatts to 12 kilowatts for road trips, outdoor campings, heavy-duty usage, or home emergencies. Two Jackery Explorer 2000 Plus solar generators can be connected together, with 10 battery packs connected at one time, expanding the power to 24 kilowatts. Scared y'all. Dunbar! We're back to Bison Ranching out here, um, doing a little herd check since we've been hanging out at the RV. These bison are probably, I don't know, a ah, quarter of a mile away from our RV. So we're back out here right now. The girls are with me. They're parked right here next to me. They haven't come around the RV much, so we came to find them to do our evening herd check. It's pretty out here right now. This is this back 80 that I'm talking about. I was excited to get the bison on. This is part of the burn unit right here. And uh, one of our favorite spots. They've been spending a lot of time back here. I think this may have been an old hay meadow at one point. There is a lot of diversity of plants here and you can see the native coming through. It's getting close to, we're about to have to take them off. This specific uh, pasture, this whole 80, and we've got to move them and rotate them to the front. It's part of our uh, burn plan. The whole thing, it's not just about burning and, and all the grasses and, and diverse plants coming up. It's about, we've got to keep the native grasses at a certain height. So it's got to be at that six to eight inch mark. And uh, these guys have been getting after it for about a month now. And so it's time to take them off here, let this rest, and then we can bring them back out here later. But we've got to keep that six to eight inch height of our native grasses. That brings me to my next point. Why did we put Dunbar out here with Hoss's herd? Just a little reminder, some of you guys are new to us. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to Bison Ranching, okay? There's 10 animals out here from South Dakota, from Antelope Creek Bison, some friends of mine, Scott Osmond and his family. Um, and that includes Hoss. Hoss is in that group. So we've got nine of those females. And then we've got 10 more females from the Wolverine Bison up in Canada. Don't know exactly the city. Um, some of my bison people can correct me on that, but um, great producers, both from South Dakota and from the Wolverine bison up in Canada. Great animals, okay? One of the things that somebody taught me, probably Doc and some other producers, when you start raising bison, the most important thing is, if you wanna do it right, is start off with good animals. And so we started off with five awesome animals from Doc Parsons, um, the, our vet out of Stratford, Oklahoma. We started with five, which is Dunbar's group, right? Dunbar, Peaches, Eleanor, Bellstar, those, which are all here now. We started off with them. And then from there, we've expanded. We've bought some from Native American tribes in Oklahoma, which is the Quapaw. We have four females from there. And then we went out and we were able to get the Ponderosa. We, our land grew. So if you hear me talk about Project 189, it's talking about the Ponderosa and building all the fence. There's 189 acres here is what there is. With that, we were, because our land grew, purchased our first land, our first ranch, essentially. Because we went and did that, we were able to expand. And so with more land, what we did is we went and invested in some animals. We went and bought good animals from some good people, some, from some good producers is what we did. Here's my point in all of this is what I'm trying to say. Dunbar is joining some really awesome females. So we're taking Dunbar's genetics from local, from Oklahoma, which comes from an outstanding genetic pool of awesome bulls and awesome animals of great genetic lineage from Gerald Parsons. He's one of the best in the country that keeps up with genetic diversity in herds does a great job of that. So we've got a lot of genetic diversity in this herd. You don't have to just go out and buy several animals from one place. You can go out and get several from different herds. And that's what we tried to do. And uh, so you're taking Dunbar and Haas's genetics and mixing them in with all these awesome females right here. That's what we're trying to do. So a lot of people were giving us a little grief on Dunbar getting the shaft, right? Not being put with those adults. Those adults are great. I just named off several 
that are from the Quapaw Nation, uh, from our first herd, Eleanor Bell Star, that are from Gerald Parsons, local um, bison. And then there's a kind of mixed in there. There's some others. There's, we've got one from Iowa, uh, Noah's heifer that he gave us. Um, and then we've got some others mixed in. We've got some from Missouri with Big Joe. So Big Joe's got his own genetic diversity in that herd. And Dunbar and Haas have their own genetic diversity too as well. So Dunbar's in a good place, just to tell you guys. He's, he's already got those ge good genetics. And now he gets to spread his love out here to these awesome breedable, now breedable females because they're two years old now. And uh, yeah, they're still growing. They can, it takes them to, to be about six years old to hit the full growth of a bison. So these young ladies still have a long ways to go, but they're with two great bulls, Dunbar and Haas. Dunbar's not getting the shaft, guys. I promise you. He's in a quite diverse group of genetics here. And that's important to me and Marissa is that we have good genetics in our herd and we pay attention to that. And that's when we pull hair and that's when we send our hair to UC Davis and have it tested so we can have the parentage lineage um, DNA done. And so we can keep up with that. And so we know who's who and what baby's coming from who. That's why Dunbar is here. So fun to come out here as a family and hang out together. We had a great time spending some time out here with the bison and with Brooks and Marissa and I, and mom and Kevin came over for dinner one night to hang out. Hey guys, I just wanna thank Jackery for sponsoring today's video. Guys, don't forget to go check out our link in the description below. Jackery's got it going on right now, guys. Starting June 14th to the 19th, you can get the early bird offer for the 2000 plus up to $499 off during this time. Also, from June 19th to July 10th, use the special code PLUSCROSS to get a 9% discount off of Jackery Official and other Jackery options off of Amazon. Check the links below in the description to get your Jackery Solar Generator 2000+.